Hello, EP Calculus BC students. Mr. Record here, and I'd like to welcome you to our introductory video for what I call Unit 9B uh, at Avon High School, which is basically the middle portion of Unit 9 from the AP Calculus College Board curriculum uh, and exam description. Basically, it's taking away all the vector stuff from the middle of that unit and packing it into its own particular unit, 9.4, 9.5, and 9.6 will be the topics that comprise Unit 9B. And the very beginning of this particular Unit 9.4 focuses on defining and differentiating vector valued functions. And most of this is going to be circling around the definition of a vector value function and all of the review aspects that go into basically remembering what a vector is, what you can use it for, and that kind of thing. The calculus components are going to be coming at the very end of this. So depending on your course history, if you've taken uh, quite a bit of physics classes, especially a calculus-based physics, you probably are going to not have a lot of trouble with the very beginning portions of, of this particular uh, topic, and you might be able to fast forward through some of the videos if you find yourself watching them. But in any event, I do want to make sure that I very carefully go through these ideas that you perhaps learned in a trig class so that we're all on the same page, because I know it's been a while since some of you may have taken uh, your trig course. So defining and differentiating vector value functions. Well, it says here that in geometry and physics, there are a lot of concepts that we can classify using a single number and we call those scalar quantities the, the word scalar is often associated with a real number but there are a lot of concepts that require just a little bit of a different type of representation mainly because they have a need to express two different ideas magnitude and direction which is a very very common a component in in a lot of physics courses and so we're going to use the concept of a vector to express things like that now if you want to get a good uh, feel for what kinds of things do we express with a scalar versus a vector well things like temperature and mass and time and, and length area volume all of those ideas we can have always used a scalar a numerical value but when you're talking about forces or, or velocities even uh, in the true sense and accelerations in their true sense we need to really think more of a vector because those each have a force component to them and a direction so Let's take a look here with the help of our friend Vector Villain. Vector Villain? Is that his name? Vector Villain? Uh, from um, uh, the Despicable Me uh, movie. Uh, to represent a vector, we're going to use a directed line segment as shown below. Piranha Gun. The directed line segment PQ will have an initial point of P and a terminal point of Q. And will always denote its length by these very interesting um, brackets. Um, it, oftentimes you're going to see me write the double brackets to really indicate that it's not like the absolute value of PQ, although there's sort of a connection between absolute value and length we'll talk about later. But I want to use these double brackets when I talk about magnitude. And notice the order that the P and the Q appear in is very important because the first uh, point is going to always be the initial point, and the second point Q would be the terminal point. That's where the arrow would be. Two directed line segments that have the same length and the same direction are going to be called equivalent. And all of the directed line segments below are technically equivalent um, uh, to the original. So if you see this PQ vector right here with the initial point P, terminal point Q, even though uh, these vectors here are a little bit different looking, I can guarantee to you that they are the same length as PQ. They have the same magnitude, but it's very clear that these four do not have the same direction as PQ, so they're not equivalent technically, but these four vectors in and of themselves in that family all are equivalent because all four have the same length and all four have the same direction. A lot of times we will call a vector in a plane with a Bold face, lowercase letter, oftentimes V, U is another very popular one. Now that will bring up an interesting situation because how do you write a bold face letter V? That's a great question, right? So you can do a couple of different things. Um, if you want to do 
V with a little ray above it, that typically is denoted as a vector. If you want to write V and put what's called a hat above it, which is like a little uh, sort of an accent circumflex upside down V, that would be okay. And then to be completely honest, if you just wrote V from a context standpoint, I would accept that because it really kind of focuses on what comes after that V. What are these things equal to? Do you have them set equal to something that has a vector form to it, of which there are two that we're going to talk about? I'm completely okay with that. Just from a typewritten standpoint, you're going to see boldface when uh, they're presented in typewritten form. When I write these, um, I will most likely use one of these two options. Okay. Like I said, it's kind of hard to, to write V and make it bold. You could try, but it gets kind of tricky. All right. Vectors are, are like I said, typically denoted by the lowercase boldface letters. All right. Let's look at our first example here. Uh, it says, let U be the directed line segment from the point 0, 0 to the point 5, 2. And let V be represented by the directed line segment from negative 1, 3 to 4, 5. We want to show that vector u is equivalent to vector v. Now, in order to pull that off, you have to go back to your ideas of magnitude and direction, right? We have to make sure that they have the same length and the same direction. And it doesn't really matter which one you tackle first. So let's say that we tackle the direction first. And the direction is just really an idea of slope. I'll write the word slope because it's a little bit easier to write than direction. So if I wanted to find the slope of, let's say, vector, uh, we'll start with u here because it comes first alphabetically. So the slope of vector u, well, it says u is the directed line segment that starts at this point, ends at 5, 2. Well, I can just simply use the slope formula. Take the difference of the y values, divide by the difference of the x values, and lo and behold, I have myself a slope of two-fifths. All right, now, on the other hand, let's go ahead and take a look at the slope of vector v. So I'm going to use red ink to denote all of my analysis with vector v, and I'll use the blue for vector u. So for vector v, I'll do the same thing. I'll take the difference of the y values. So I'll take the 5 minus the 3 and divide that by 4 minus negative 1. Let's see what I get here. 2 on top, 5 on bottom. Well, lo and behold, we have now just proven that these two vectors have the same direction. They're moving the same uh, direction on the coordinate plane. Now, does that mean that they have the same length? Well, in order to pull that off, the length or magnitude, maybe the word length might be a little bit easier. The length of vector u would look like this. Now, of course, you could use a different abbreviation. <laughs> this would work as, as well, right? The double brackets around u. And to calculate this, well, since I'm given a couple of ordered pairs, well, the easiest way to find the length is just use your distance formula, if you recall it. The distance formula says you take the difference of the x values and square them, and then add to that the difference of your y values squared. And once I square root all of that, I should have my distance. So it turns out that we're going to get, uh, what are we going to get here? The square root of 25 plus 4, which is 29 under a square root. Can't do much with 29. Can't simplify it, of course. And so we're going to stop right there. That would be the magnitude or the distance of vector u. That little line segment, that, that directed line segment would have that particular length. All right, doing the same thing here, the length of our good friend vector v. also known as the magnitude of v. Okay, so we're going to take the square root of the difference between the x's. So I'll start with 4 and subtract negative 1. 
And if you're wondering, does it make a difference which, which value you start with? It does not because you are squaring. And then we'll add, I'll go in a consistent fashion here, 5 minus 3 and square that. And you will very soon see that we're going to get 4 minus negative 1, do that first, which is 5, square that, boom, there's your 25. And of course, 5 minus 3 is 2, squared is 4. And then in no time, you're going to get your square root of 29. And that pretty much solves the problem. We have proven, we have shown that vector u and vector v are equivalent because their magnitudes and directions are indeed the same. I hope this helps. There's going to be quite a few other videos that are going to uh, it slowly either introduce you to or at least review some very important concepts surrounding vectors. So we definitely want you to check them out. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.